by your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Stone to death. They were cut into, and they died. 
died by being murdered in spirit. They went around wearing the skin of sheep and goats, beaten, oppressed, and mistreated. The world didn't deserve that. They wandered around in deserts, mountains, caves, and holes in the ground. All these people did receive what was promised, though they were given approval for their faith. God provided something better for us so they would be made perfect without us. So then, with endurance, let's also run the race that is laid out in front of us, since we have such a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us. Let's throw off any extra baggage, get rid of the sin that trips us up, and fix our eyes on Jesus, faith's pioneer and perfecter. He endured the cross, ignoring the shame, for the sake of the joy that was laid out in front of him, and sat down at the right side of God's throne. Here with the Spirit is saying to God's name. And let us see God.
or the sins that separate us from God. In the last few sentences from our reading this morning, we hear these words. So then with endurance, let, let, let us also run the race that is laid out before us. Since we have a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let's throw off any baggage, get rid of the sin that trips us up, and fix our eyes on Jesus, face pioneer and perfecter. He endured the cross, ignoring the shame for the sake of the joy that was laid out in front of him and sat down at the right hand of God. Specifically in this passage, there are three things that stand out. Two phrases that give us very specific instruction and a recipe for success. And a third phrase that tells us what lies in store for us when we follow the first two. The first instruction. Let's also run the race that is laid out in front of us. I was thinking about this passage and especially recalling many of the hard decisions and obstacles and events experienced in my life. I made a mental list. Sometimes I ponder the emotions I felt at the time, the fear, I recalled the pain, both physical and emotional, and sometimes even spiritual. I am not unique. All of us could do the same mental exercise and make the same or similar discoveries and recall similar emotions that we felt as well. As a student, maybe for you it's a book report or a test. As a parent, maybe it's something like your thoughts when you brought your first child home from the hospital. Perhaps your mind was filled with doubts and questions. Maybe you wondered how God could have even trusted you with this precious and glorious miracle of a new person to love and to nurture and to care for and to raise. Or maybe for any of us, something that was hard was a new job, a hard conversation, getting through an illness. There are so many things we can name. And I bet if y'all really took the time, you'd make the same discovery I did. You would remember a person or something someone did or an answered prayer, something that helped you get through what you were facing. But let us not confuse this with the common rationale offered by many. God never gives you more than you can handle. That statement is bad theology. God is a loving God. Jesus walked the earth and healed and shared good news. He didn't make someone sick just so he could heal them. God has no checklist to make sure that someone has an accident, faces an illness, experiences a disappointment, just to test you or give you a reason to pray. The race that is laid out in front of us God is with us just as God was, with, God was with Jesus in his life on earth. That leads us to the second instruction. To fix our eyes on Jesus. Years ago, the big fad was to wear a silicone bracelet that sported the letters WWJD. WWJD was the acronym for what would Jesus do? Great question, but let's look at it with a different perspective. Instead of in the context of a reaction in which it was defined, look at this question as an action. What would Jesus do? A couple of Sundays ago, 30 or 40 of us gathered in the parish hall, and whether we realized it or not, it was to specifically answer that question, what would Jesus do? While we did not frame the question in those words, it is the question we answered. The answer we came up with is an incredible list of projects and ministries for this loving and caring community, you people here, to share our love and our devotion to the risen Son of God, Jesus, with those with whom we share this community. This list is on a bulletin board across
across from the office in the hallway back here on the way to the parish hall. Fix your eyes on Jesus. The question is not WWJD. What would Jesus do? You already know the answer to that. The question really is W-A-Y-G-D-T. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? How are you going to find your place in these identified needs and ministries? And in our and, and interacting with our community that we minister to and including that in who we are. Friends, you don't have to be in charge or do all the work. Pick something that speaks to you, to you and define your involvement. When I was the youth director at Church of the Resurrection in Oklahoma City, a member of the parish, Helen was her name, she told me that there's no way she would teach Sunday school or vacation Bible school, but she'd make all the cookies we wanted. And in a bold and perhaps stupid move, I said to her, on one condition. Helen looked at me and she slapped me on the shoulder and she said, I just offered to make an unlimited number of cookies for you as my gift to children and youth and you have a condition? And I nodded. I went all in. What is the condition, she asked. I told her she had to come and pass them out. Well, long story short, Helen found unspeakable joy in interacting with the children and youth of the parish. She found a way to take her gift of baking and be involved, not just supporting children and youth ministries, but involved. Involved at their level, with them one-on-one. -on -one. And that brings us to the last phrase from Hebrews that tells us what lies in store for us as we run this race before us. Speaking of Jesus, it says he endured the cross, ignoring the shame, for the sake of joy. There's a devotional site that I subscribe to called Grow Christians offered by Forward Movement, which is the same organization that publishes the day-by-day -day -day devotional that we have in the outer doorway. Our own Mother Maria is often an author in this Grow Christians daily devotional. And one day this week, Episcopal priest Father Tim Gavin, who serves as the head chaplain at the Episcopal Academy located in Newtown Square, Pennsylvania, he offered this reflection. He says this, We live in a culture in which money seems to be the answer to all our problems. Even in our charity, we tend to address issues of hunger, homelessness, and poverty through money. He goes on to say, of course, I realize money is necessary to improve the conditions of so many of our neighbors. However, the danger of solving a problem only with our finances leads to those very finances creating a buffer between the giver and the receiver. In a sense, when we only give money, we may unconsciously distance ourselves from the poor, the suffering, and the neglected whom it would be easy for us to forget. When I take students to a local soup kitchen or travel with them to Haiti, I remind them of our purpose, to make the stranger our neighbor. I encourage them to sit and talk with the people they serve. Our students willingly embrace this edict and through shared conversations, learn the backstory of each person they serve. This gives them a sense of the person's individual dignity. Often, often they find they share many similarities. The interpersonal exchange allows them to see beyond the labels associated with the marginalized. They see a person who happens to also be hungry, homeless, or lonely. 
Father Tim goes on to tell a story about St. Clair, a child of a wealthy family who heard Francis of Assisi preach. Her heart opened to embrace the poor, and as a result, she voluntarily became poor herself. Her vow of poverty guided her to resist the lure of material pleasures and the wealth to full well, to more fully love God and love her neighbor. She learned what life was like for the people she served. In a sense, she discovered their backstory. As a result, she made the stranger her neighbor. Claire inspired other women to follow her example. Consequently, she founded the Poor Claires. When Francis suggested she become the superior of the order, she refused the position until she came of age. Her humility and Christian devotion became hallmarks for the poor players to follow. As a result, the order devoted themselves to prayer, nursing the sick, and other works of mercy for the poor and the neglected. Players' response to the extreme poverty she witnessed in her world may inspire us to examine our own lives. As Christians, our society may not be all that different than Claire's. As our middle class shrinks and the divide between rich and poor increases, we can examine our attachment to our material wealth. We can teach our children to respect the value of today's dollar and help them realize part of that dollar can go a long way to helping others. However, it may be even more important to teach our children there is a person, a living, breathing person, who may be the recipient of our charity. We can teach our children to honor the image of God within every other human being. He finishes his reflection this way. He says, I love the story which informs us of the extent that Claire embraced the gospel. When she was 18 years old, she vowed herself to a life of poverty. Her family was horrified and forced her, forced her to return home. One night, she escaped her house through the door of the den, a small side door that was traditionally opened only to carry out a corpse. And she returned to the house of the Franciscans. This symbolic gesture represents Claire's dying to her old self in order to rise in life fully devoted to Christ. Claire stripped herself of her old clothes and put on the clothes of Christ. She was renewed in Christ. Run the race that was laid out in front of us. We can certainly interpret this as the hard stuff we face in life. We can also equate this to the good stuff too. And and my friends, we can also look to this list, this list that hangs on the bulletin board that we came up with together. We can look at this list as the race course, this list that was, that was inspired in us through the presence of the Holy Spirit as we came together to explore and plan how we will share the love of Jesus in our community. Fix our eyes on Jesus. Ask the question, what would Jesus do? Not as a reaction, but as an action. What would Jesus do? It's an important question. And it is the foundation for the answer to the question, what are you going to do? Jesus is waiting for you to ask yourself that question and to find the answer. And quite frankly, so is a community that surrounds us. When you answer that question, when you do, Jesus, as our Lord Jesus, just as our Lord Jesus Christ endured that trip to Calvary for the sake of the joy laid out in front of him, you too will find joy in receiving and sharing the unmistakable, unconditional, and unending love of Christ.
ordeal for the prayers of the people. Compassionate God, you have promised to hear when we pray in the name of your Son. Therefore, in confidence and trust, we pray for the church. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Mary's Church, D.C., Majestic One, enliven the church for its mission. That we may see salt of the earth and rise to the world. Breathe fresh life into your people. Give us power to reveal Christ in word and action. We pray for the world. Creator of all, lead us and every people into ways of justice and peace. That we may respect one another in freedom and truth. Awaken in us a sense of wonder for the earth and all that is in it. Teach us to care creatively for its resources. We pray for the community. On the second Sunday, we pray for those serving in the military. Parents, Zach, Malachi, Megan, Casey, Nate, Garrett, and Steve. God of truth, inspire with your wisdom those whose decisions affect the lives of others. That all may act with integrity and courage. Give grace to all whose lives are linked with ours. May we serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. We pray for those in need, including those on our prayer list. Vernon, Betty, Susan, Audrey, Donna, Richard, Sally, Donna, Diane, Jack, Joyce, Barbara, Ed, Rogers, Dick, Tom, Vera, Betty, Sarah, Margaret, Larry, Bryce, Katie, Gwen, Virginia, Joan, and Heather. God of hope, comfort and restore all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. May we know the power of your redeeming love. Make us willing agents of your compassion. Strengthen us as we share in making people whole. We remember those who have died, including Joseph Chase and Edith Henry, and those who mourn. We remember with thanksgiving those who have died in the faith of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. Father, into your hands we command them. Give comfort to those who mourn. Bring them peace in your time of loss. We praise you for all your saints who have entered your eternal glory. May their example inspire and encourage us. We pray for ourselves and our ministry. Lord, you have called us to serve you. Grant that we may walk in your presence, your love in our hearts, your truth in our minds, your strength in our wills. Until the end of our journey, we know the joy of our homecoming and the welcome of your grace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. Through the cross of Christ, God, have mercy on you. 
heart of you, set you free, and keep you in eternal life. Know that you are forgiven, and be at peace. Amen. Please stand. Here is the food that satisfies the taste of communion. Here is the wine pouring free, the washing away of fear. Here is life abundant, a table of peace for all. May this peace be in us and among us, a sign of hope for a world renewed. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
have been here often and you who have not been here in a while or ever before. Come, because it is Christ who bids us come. It is Christ who meets us here. Come, hear the risen Christ call your name. My friends, behold who you are. May we come what we receive.
you prayerfully found on page 14. Please stand for me. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we give you thanks and praise that when we were so far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we share Christ's body, live in his prison mind. We give you his cup, bring life to others. We whom the Spirit fights, give life to the world. Keep us firm in the hope that you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole world live to praise your name. Is anyone celebrating a birthday or an anniversary this week? Let's come on down. Again, I want to extend a welcome to all of you this morning and those that worship me. Hear it? Oh. Are <laughs> oh, your anniversary? <laughs> All right, in here. Okay, Jerry, when was your birthday? It was August 6th. August 6th, okay. We'll do anniversary in a second. Let us pray for Jerry. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when the scourge their sorrowful. Raise them up when they fall. And in their hearts be your peace, which passes all understanding. Abide all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit, bless the service and peace. Amen. All right, Karen, you tell us the day. Phoebe, you tell us the year. 24. 24? 20. 20. Congratulations. All right, let us pray for Phoebe and Terrence. Oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessing upon these, your servants, that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience and wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit, bless the preserve, strengthen, and uphold you in your name. Amen. Happy anniversary. Again, it's a joy to welcome all of you to worship and to our life together this day. If you'd like more information about uh, St. Paul, just pull out the key card on the rack in front of you and hand it to me or to Steve or an usher on your way out. We'd be delighted to share more information with you. We have a slew of announcements. Men's and Ladies Night is this Wednesday. You see the bulletin. Please let Colleen know. Raise your hand, Colleen, if you plan to attend. Women's, men's, let Jean or Natalie raise your hand, Jean, if you plan to attend as well. Two weeks from Yesterday, we will have our uh, hike to Fort Washington National Park and picnic along the Potomac on August 27th. We'll meet at 9.30. If you're interested in going, uh, you can sign up. There's um, It's in the midweek, a link, or just email the office. If you have questions, you can um, contact Greg Ferguson or Sue Truitt. It's a hike for all abilities. If you do want to wander off and do something more challenging, you're certainly more than welcome to do so. On the next day, on the 28th, we have two special things. One will be welcoming, formally welcoming and receiving new members who have joined the church. So it'll be a day of great celebration. We'll also bless all backpacks and laptops for all school personnel and children before the first day of school. So bring your backpack and laptop. Afterwards, we'll have an ice cream social and popsicle party for everyone. So I do hope that you will come. Feel free to bring friends. Um, or neighbors with you that Sunday. The next Sunday, we will have information about our prayer buddy program, which is in the bulletin. Um, if you're interested in serving a prayer buddy, please come to that, and I'll tell you more. We'll also go over it. Uh, even if you served last year, just let me know if you want to continue. I won't automatically assume that you do. 
Um, and also, if your child would like a prayer buddy, please let me know. There's a registration form on the website and in the midweek for our children and youth for the school year. Please uh, complete it, even if you're not sure how much they'll participate, because we need it on file in terms of the media release, allergies, and whether they want a prayer buddy, and things like that, and potential scheduling conflicts. So please fill that out. And then on the 11th, our We'll have our homecoming welcome back Sunday, which will go back to two services, 8 o'clock and 10.15. Um, and uh, Sunday school and youth group will all begin that day as well. There will be more information coming out about that. If you'd like to um, uh, assist with any of our children or youth formation or just learn more about it, please see me or Jenna Monroe. We'd we'll be delighted to share with you. We, uh, Asking questions about it does not obligate you to continue to serve. Um, and then the retreat is a month away. Next Sunday is the last Sunday to get the $20 per person early for discount. Please don't let cost be a factor in attending. Let me know. Um, we do have scholarships available. Also, Diane will be working on the new ministry robust schedule for ushers and readers and child spares and acolytes counselors for September so please by this weekend log on to your ministry service pro account there's a link on the bullet in the midweek and on the website you click worship and then there's service schedule block out the days that you're not available um, that just helps with advanced planning um, uh, one more thing next Sunday after worship there will be a block party planning meeting our annual community block party is on October 29th um, Everyone's help is needed to make this a successful um, event. It's been a couple of years since we've been able to do it. If you have questions, see Colleen. She'd be happy to help you, or you can see Deacon Steve. Also, as you make your way down the hallway across from the office, there's a bulletin board with the ideas and things that were generated at the community ministries meeting a couple weeks ago. There's also a little card that you can pick up and fill out if you'd like more information. If you have other ideas, feel free to see Deacon Steve with any um, questions. I know that's a lot. There's just a lot going on pretty soon. One more. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, a week from Thursday is the meet and greet at Eva Turner. Um, I'm going to be on vacation, so Joyce has agreed to, to spearhead that effort to get the, the school supply collection that we're currently doing delivered to the school, but she would love to have some help. So uh, if you can help that evening to deliver school supplies and, and share our love with that community, see Joyce if you would please. Joyce, raise your hand. Everybody knows you, but some people may not. So next time you need to ask Joyce to raise her hand, maybe you can say, everybody help me raise your hand, we can see a lot of Yeah. <laughs> Yes, you can put things on the bench down in front of, the, at the end of the hallway. Uh, there's a, there'll, there'll be a bed. Um, specifically, we're collecting new packages of underwear and undershirts, which are always needed. Uh, pencils, binders, it's okay. Pencils, binders, um, Kleenex. I think there's a couple things. We'll have it in the midweek, but, so if you can bring all of those items and help deliver and distribute them that day, that would be, Really, really great. Yes, and we're specifically requesting one inch binders based on their school list. So, one inch binders, nothing too big. Um, thank you, Debbie, for that reminder. All right, uh, I'm sure we're forgetting something, but send um, your email this week. All right, please stand for the blessing. May God, the first breath, fill you with wonder and awe this week. May Jesus Christ, the breath of tenderness and comfort, fill you with peace. And may the Holy Spirit, the breath of passion and fire, renew your spirit and enliven your soul. To the blessing of God Almighty, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
ਕੋਈ ਹੈ ਨਹੀਂ 